Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge. This is Big Mech's workshop and paint studio. Um, today we're going to be painting a Fiend of Slanesh. This will be the first time I've uh, painted anything by, well, for Slanesh. Um, this is an old fashioned metal model. Uh, I'm not a fan of painting the metals. Um, they don't take the paint quite the way I'd like them. Maybe that's just me. Um, what I'm going to show you in a sec for the first minute or so of this video is me faffing around trying to come up with a scheme and we'll fix it a little bit later on. The first thing I did was I went and did a Moonray Flesh by Scale 75 as a pre-highlight. Um, you could use any colour for this and I'm going to be using the paintbrush mainly for this model. Um, once I've decided the palette, but I thought I'd leave this experiment of colours in because uh, this is how I came to the well, this is how I came to the conclusion that those were the colours I was going to use. Because at this point, when it's primed, you can go back over it as much as you want. And that looks very, very pale to you. I actually had to turn down my um, lights on my desk so uh, it'd actually show up. What I'm doing now is giving it a spray of Undead Flesh by Scale 75. Uh, I wanted a, a transition from the midsection. I also wanted to make the tail and everything else trans uh, transition into the other parts. So a lot of this model is going to look a mess until we get to the end and neaten it all up. But uh, I just left this in because these were the steps I did. And I'm, I'm spraying underneath most of the model with this green and at the top where those uh, hair or the fur comes out. Then I'm going back over that with Moonray Flesh. And one of the reasons I decided against this colour scheme was it just was not showing up very well on camera for you. Um, although what I'm doing here, this would work very well for a, uh, a Nurgle based army. We could have done purple, but at the time of me doing this, Andy was supposed to be painting the mask uh, in purples. And we also have the harp as well, so that's going to be purples and pinks, so we'll save that one for another day. So we will be doing Slanesh in traditional colours. Next I'm adding a layer of Reclam Flesh Shade, really watered down. Because the main colours I wanted to work with this, I wanted to work with something green, orange and blue. Um, just to really muck about with the palette because Slanesh has always been a really weird one. Um, but in a minute we'll get to an actual decent starting point. You can see me just mucking about here with these transitions, just seeing what I can come up with. Now this is one part that will stay on, is I'm using black by game colour. And what you want to do here, so a lot of this video is going to be about making the transitions, is you want to leave this black at the top, so the scorpion tail and the claws are going to be black, but as you get towards the fleshy area, that's where you want to finish with your brush, so all that black paint you've got really watered down at the top, by the time you get to the bottom there's much less, and it's going to be a lot easier to uh, transition and feather that out. We're going to go over that with lots of layers anyway. As you can see there, I've sort of feathered that out into the underneath of the uh, scales. Would there be scales? Well, it'd be an exoskeleton for a scorpion. But uh, not scales. So the next colour, Undead Flesh mixed with Mis Misfits Green, and they're both scale 75. And this was just to put some more green depth into the, uh, the back part. And this led me later on to thinking that uh, the fur would be green and some of the other fleshy parts would be much more orange. So next I'm going to start adding some colour to these claws because they're just plain black and we're going to use Incubi Darkness by Games Workshop. Now this is really watered down and I'm just going to use glazing techniques for this. Starting from the darkest recesses and moving my way to where I want the highlight to be the brightest uh, with just what's left on the on the brush after I've cleaned most of it off. This is a, almost a watery consistency of paint. I'm also going to start transitioning that ever so slightly into those uh, green fleshy parts at the bottom of the tail. Then after that I'm going to use Dark Reaper and Incubi Darkness and Dark Reaper is actually the lighter colour out of the two there. Um, so that name is quite misleading, but we're going to mix that together in another glaze and start working up the edges of those claws and all the edges of that tail. And that tail, the edges on that are going to take a long time to start building up because you have to treat each bit of that tail as an individual part, so that one will take a long time. 
Next, to add even more brightness to it, we're going to be using Dark Reaper on its own now. The reason we're mixing these colours as we go, it's just going to make the transition move ever so slightly more subtly and uh, gets rid of more brush strokes and uh, just keeps your transition nice and clean. As you can see, the, uh, the lighter colours are starting to take off now in contrast to where we've left the darker sections. I didn't paint the little claws inside the claws uh, until later on because I wasn't sure whether I wanted them to be these dark colours or I wanted them to be brighter later on like bone or something like that. Now to lighten up that colour even more we're going to use Dark Reaper mixed with Pale Grey Blue by Model Colour. And this is the top eighth of the highlight but basically for the long claw points we're going right to the end of the claws because I thought that would look best. You can work it towards all the edges if you want, I just wanted them to look like they came out a bit further uh, than the model actually allows and they looked a bit sharper at the, at the furthest point. And I also do the same thing to the tail so it gives sort of a, makes the model look a bit bigger and a, look, a little bit more pronounced than usual. And this is where I realised that these uh, pale colours were just a fence lanesh. This is not good enough and this is why I said Earlier in the video it was an experiment and we're going to use Ungo Flesh now by Games Workshop uh, because it's close to the tones we were using but it's much more rich and that's going to work as a really good base and then what we're going to do is start working those other colours that we had from the palette back into it in different fashions so we can get all these transitions that we want on this model. As you can see I think Slanesh would be a lot happier with this one. So now we're going to add Moonray Flesh to Ungo Flesh. Um, we're using all glazing techniques on this almost, uh, except for the edge highlights at the very end. Now Moonray Flesh is a very pale colour, but what that's going to do, we're going to put that down and it's going to mute the colours like light is hitting it. Unfortunately though, Moonray Flesh does not show up very well on camera. But in comparison to the Ungo Flesh that's now underneath that, we're going to get a, a shadow that's actually quite a vibrant and bright colour. So it's going to make the flesh look much more alive. Now we're going to use that same mix and this is where we're going to start blending in those blacks. You see how thin that water is. Starting on the top half of that tail, working up to where the curve is. We're going to do that on both sides and it's going to take quite a few layers. And the reason we're doing the glazing technique for this you're going to have to, is so that bits of those blue will show through and it'll make the Ungo flesh and Moonray flesh look ever so slightly blue on that transition as well. Now, I also noticed that on this model, as I've done the Incubi Darkness underneath, as the um, Scorpion Soul look follows all the way underneath, that only one side of this model has uh, breasts and the other side looks like plating. So I decided to water down some Incubi Darkness a lot and I'm going to start washing that into the shaded areas. And what we're going to do is have those breasts blending to the armor plate. So we go from flesh to the scorpion sort of look. And we're going to sort of carry that on around the model in certain areas. And uh, once you've built that up that actually makes a good contrast. Now, just like we did in the first step of the video where I mucked up, we're going to use Reclam Flesh Shade. Now this is going to really warm those oranges back up. It's going to add a little bit more colour into the Moonray Flesh. And as you can see, I'm going over those black transitions that we're working on as well. It's important to do that in this step because we want those to uh, transition. So it looks like the top of those... I'm going to keep calling them scales for now, but I know they're armor plates. Um, that uh, They blend in very nicely uh, with the flesh so they almost look seamless. You want to keep this wash watered down so you can keep control of it, it's best to do more than one layer. And as you can see that colour is now not only bright in the recesses, it has more tone and life to the highlights that we've put on in the Moonray flesh. Next is Steel Legion Drab by Games Workshop. We're going to use this on all the horns and spikes, or oh, I did. And then I changed my mind, but the one place it definitely is going to be staying is these antlers or horns. 
Trying to figure out what this creature actually is, is, is hopeless. It's part aardvark, part reindeer, scorpion, horse. Um, it's just a very bizarre model to paint, although it is a lot of fun because there's a lot of wiggle room for colours and mucking about. Misfits Green by Scale 75, which was one we used in the palette beforehand, and we mixed that to get a flesh tone. I decided that worked well in the palette, so we're going to use that to start painting in all the fur and all the hair. So, so far we're managing to get the greens, the oranges and the blues all to work together. Now, if you remember the beginning of the video where I showed you the um, initial idea, we're going to use Misfits Green and Undead Flesh, both scale 75. We're going to mix those like we did in the beginning, and we're going to start transitioning the flesh to the fur section. This is just going to make the top of the skin in the area where the fur is ever so slightly green, like there is an actual colour change now on the skin, rather than it just being that one colour. As an end result, I wish I'd watered this down, maybe took a little bit more care with it, but um, basically just glazing that in, and you can see it's a very thin wash consistency, but it's going to bring all those colours from the palette to life. Now for the horns, um, I decided to go for a more pale colour rather than bone for these, so I went for Carrick Stone and sort of followed that paint route for the horns. I was going to paint some... Um, designs on the horns like some tribal designs and stuff like that but time didn't allow it um, there's other demon videos coming out as well soon so I've got to get those done again it's a glazing technique where we're working from the bottom and bringing all those colors up to the top and we did a wash a while back on the skin so now I'm going back to moon ray and ungo flesh but this time there's a little bit more moon ray in it Just painting all the top sides of those breasts, uh, really don't have to go into too much detail there. And uh, painting the tops of the shoulders, we're just working all the top highlights at this point. And we've not really got that many different colours, so keeping in control of this palette's not been too difficult. But this transition here is a bit awkward, so you definitely want to blend some moon ray into the scorpion claws. And blend it backwards we're going to add more washes on that again later on to help that blend and at this point I'm using almost pure moon ray just to pick out the um, the hot spots on the flesh where I want to draw the um, eye to all the details so we've got that moon ray flesh and it's gently glazed over all the um, dark Tungor fur and over the greens as well so we've got lots of transition so far on this model. This is Hellhound Flesh by Scale 75 and I'm using that to do the eyeballs. I wanted to leave the eyeballs blank for this one and cloudy as there was so much colour everywhere else and I couldn't think of a colour that would fit this entire palette without being too out of place or too distracting. And uh, Jumping back to the horns while they're drying, I'm going to use an Agrax Earthshade wash and you can see this is very watered down because we don't want too much of that reddish brown colour to it, I want them really pale. Like the only thing pale on this model would be its horns, I was going to do a tribal pattern down those but didn't have time. Sort of the face with this colour palette started to remind me of the, um, the fawn from Pan's Labyrinth in the face which is where I got the idea for the cloudy eyes from. Now we're going to use German Orange by Model Colour, and we're going to start painting the nipples, which unfortunately on this particular model weren't cast that well. Once I started painting I realised that uh, they were a bit square in places. But, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the nipple and we're going to do a small circle around that to uh, actually paint the rest of the nipple details in. I'm using a Winsor Newton Series 7 here so I can keep in control. Um, sorry the footage for that is not as good as it could have been, but um, it's quite awkward to get that on camera when the claws are in the way. I'm letting that set for a bit and while that's going on I'm going to use Carrick Stone again. Work in the uh, top quarter to the top third of those horns back into its original colour. You can rinse and repeat that as much as you want, you could even have it go to white if you really wanted to, just on those tips.
Next we're going to use Light Flesh by Model Color and German Orange by Model Color. And that's what we're going to use to highlight the ends of the nipples, but we're also going to water that down and the little circles that you did previously, you're going to blend that over those. So there's no hard line between the circles, uh, well, the edge of the nipples and the rest of the rest that you painted. It's just going to help that uh, blending and look, look a little bit more natural. Now the hair, the hair has been pretty bland until this point, so what I did is I jumped to the Games Workshop paints for a nice war boss green. And this is just an overbrush technique, I wouldn't recommend trying to dry brush um, after doing this much work on the model, because that's going to risk getting green pigment anywhere, uh, so a steady time consuming overbrush with a war boss green will do a decent job and uh, that's going to go on all the first sections. We're going to blend that in later on with some yellows and some other colours. After Warboss Green, we're now going to overbrush again using Undead Flesh by Scale 75, except this time we're not doing the whole of the hair, we're just doing the top half of the hair. So you can leave those other two colours, the Misfits green right in the base and the Warboss green, and then we're doing like the other half in uh, Undead Flesh by Scale 75. Um, if you haven't tried the Scale 75 paints, I do recommend checking those out. Um, excellent pigment, really nice for blending. And after that, because we took it quite pale now, is we're going to use a barrel tan green as a filter and that's going to make those light greens that we've got on there really colourful because I couldn't find a colour that would actually as a paint that I could just paint this on so doing it this way it's going to help blend those together and uh, act as a real nice vibrant filter bringing all those pastel colours to a nice sharp bright green Next, uh, I probably should have done this previously, but I'm using Squig Orange by Games Workshop to paint around the eye socket. I'm not too worried about getting any of the uh, Squig Orange on the actual eyeball. I can always clean it off. And with the Squig Orange, you can always feather it and blend it into the eye and then just go back over the eye again with the Hellhound Flesh, uh, leaving traces of it. The same way we did the Herald of Nurgle when we tried to add the veins into the, uh, the pustules. So uh, that would add a nice effect. Next I'm going to add a little bit of a Reckland Flesh Shade uh, to the nipples. Be careful you don't over flood this, you want to paint this on like a um, filter. And be very careful otherwise it will run down the front of the model and completely ruin all that blending work that you've done. Again, it's really difficult for me to get this on camera because of the claw. So we're going back to the eye now to lighten it up and make it look even more milky. And we're going to use Uthane Grey. I believe that's a Games Workshop paint and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But uh, we want to get into the centre of that. You want it nice and thin so you don't get any hard lines on it. But if you do get some hard lines on it, we're going for that milky clouded over look. So it could just add to the cloudy effect. But it seemed that a, a lack of colour would be the best thing to contrast with this palette. Now we're going to use German Orange and Light Flesh again. And I think this is the final blend on uh, those nipples, just getting the very tips of the nipples and around the outside of the circles that have been drawn as a final blend. So you've got some dark sections and light contrast in there. I've never painted uh, nipples on a model before and I've never painted anything this weird looking before. Uh, I don't think I have anyway. Now we needed to add some more colour to the um, the hair it still wasn't vibrant enough so what I decided to do was put some Nurgling green on the top quarter now just overbrushing the top quarter of all those um, strands of hair and that is quite time consuming just try and keep in control of the consistency of your paint 
doesn't need to be too runny because it'll run into all those details. You also don't want it too thick. It's a bit more moist than a dry brush pretty much. Uh, you just keep going over those tips till it starts to blend. Then we're going to use Lamentas Yellow by Games Workshop. And we're going to just overbrush them again, almost. We're just going to filter and colour the very tops that we've done Nurgling Green. And with all those other transitions on the hair now, that's going to start to blend really, really well. I just thought I'd make the hair on the um, model stand out a bit more. And uh, it did give that sort of result. And we're going to follow that all the way down the mane as well, and all the way down the back. Make this model really, really pop. And after Lament is yellow, we've got the tongue left to do. So we're going to use Tusker Fur by Games Workshop. I was going to go straight for Emperor's um, Children or Pink Horror, but I decided to start with a, a decent, solid, dark base of Tusker Fur. Uh, make sure you get in between all the teeth, and we're going to paint the teeth after we've done we've done the tongue, because it's easier to paint from the inside outwards, guys, rather than trying to paint that in after you've done the teeth and not hit those teeth with the previous colour. So next I'm going to start highlighting the parts of the tongue down the side and the two most pronounced parts. I'm going to use Pink Horror by Games Workshop. It was a bit of a, a bit of a puzzle trying to figure out which colour to do with this tongue. Um, but I do think this worked quite well. You could do purple or something like that if you wanted to. There's no problem with that. But uh, I decided to go for a vibrant pink in comparison to everything else. Next up, we're going to go for Empress Children. Just to do the top quarter of those highlights. And that should bring that tongue to be just vibrant enough to stand out from the model. But also be a part of the model at the same time. As you can see, that's really starting to come together now. So we've not got much left to go really. Next up we're going to use Mournfang Brown and we're going to use that to start picking out the teeth. Now because of the Tusker fur you only really need to hit the top halves of these teeth. The rest of it will all blend on the underneath and the Tusker fur will add as a shade for these teeth so it looks like the tongue's just pushed up against them which is uh, quite handy for this design um, as the teeth are quite small and awkward to get to. After that we're going to be going to a traditional sort of colour change, we're going for Zandri Dust so we're going for that sort of warmer bone look uh, just so it contrasts with the horns because I didn't want them to be the same colour as the teeth. And um, this is very thin and we're just going to do the top two thirds Almost, it's basically going to cover most of this except the underneath of the teeth. You don't have to worry about getting in there too much, so you can almost overbrush this. And as long as you keep your paint very thin, you'll get a transition almost immediately once you put that on. Then a shabti bone is going to be brought right, brought right to the ends of the teeth onto the last quarter, and that's going to make them look a little bit more sharp. Now we're going to mix Dark Reaper with Pale Grey Blue again. And at this point, there's quite a bit of Pale Grey Blue because we're going to use this as the edge highlight for all the black and armor pieces. We're also going to paint this as an edge highlight over those slight green transitions on the tail as well. Because we're going to put a wash on and uh, that's going to blend all those together. It's going to make it look a lot more natural. If you've got one color for your transition and your edge highlights running all the way up and then you blend it with the uh, black over the greens it's going to just blend those two together and make them look a hell of a lot more natural than if you just missed them completely and then put a different color highlight in. Then to uh, blend all those together with a null oil you can let this sit in the recesses of that tail that will just make it a little bit more pronounced yeah, you want the darkest sections on the underneath, that sounds a bit obvious, but uh, deciding which bit's going to be shadowed on this uh, is a bit of a pain. 
And uh, again, I always start in the middle, and as I get towards the end, I know I'm going to be running out of wash to work with, so it helps me keep uh, in control of how much wash goes on that section. Then, of course, for the horns, I needed to bring it up a little bit more, and uh, I've chipped a bit of the paint off there. Um, I will try and glaze that out um, at some point before I finish the video, but this is Rakoth flesh. Just for the top quarter of the horns now, maybe less, just for the main point. Yeah, I also put the black wash in on the claws, around the wrist areas, and that's helped transition those in. And around the eyes as well, um, that helped blend those in as well. Now, this nose has some small armour plating on it that I'd missed. So I decided at this point it could either ruin the model or make it look better. So again I did the same technique I did for the uh, chest piece next to the breast in watered down Incubi Darkness. And started blending that into the morning fan. No, into the moon ray flesh, sorry. Just to uh, bring out that feature of the nose a little bit more. You'll have to let us know what you think about that. Whether I should have left it as the moon ray flesh or whether it looks better with the armour plating done. And then there's a little brand or scar on the inside and at this point I'd run out of motivation so all I'm going to do for that Slanesh symbol is I'm going to fill that in with a Screamer Pink um, because what I'm going to do in another video when we get around to doing the harp is do that exact thing in a lot more detail and this video it needs rounding off. And there you have it guys. I didn't feel the need to put a uh, oil wash on it this time as uh, there's not really much places for the oil to sit. Uh, where it won't ruin the model uh, but there it is one fiend one fiend of slanesh all painted up in a bizarre color and uh, i hope you guys enjoyed that one um it was a, a weird one to paint and a lot of fun and we have a lot more demons coming out soon a big thank you to uh, our patrons who helped support this channel and help us get models so we can uh, carry on painting and make more tutorials and more videos for you guys and they are Daniel Wack, Warren, Love Minis, The Oak Boys, Joe Spearpoint, Ludwig Hofbauer, Kit Linquist and Agnes of Dawn. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for helping support this channel. If you want to join them on Patreon and get early access to videos, all the links for our social media are in the description. And a big thank you to The Outpost for being our affiliate link. They're also link in the description. You can get brand new hobby supplies at a second hand price. So it's it's definitely better than eBay because no one's glued anything together or there's parts missing from the box. Um, go check those out. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, more, there's one, two more demons coming out and we'll catch you in the next one.